Uh, it's me, Cody. <laughs> We're back here yet again a little sooner than I expected, and uh, that's because the last Beatles video performed a lot better than anticipated. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that this video is partially edited by a close channel friend, and that would be Levi. You guys may know him from the Flavor Town series. Um, he also edited that uh, Funny Moments video that recently went up on the channel from uh, Flavor Town season two. So he's uh, asked if he could edit a Beatles video, and I let him do this one. So if you guys like the uh, editing he does and the work he does, uh, well, let him know and show him some love. There will be a link in the description to his channel. Anyways, today what we're talking about is the Beatles drummers, plural. For the most part, everyone knows that Ringo Starr is the Beatles drummer. But there are others. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today is the history of the Beatles drummers and their lineup. So I think for all intents and purposes, we're going to start with Pete Best. So at the time, the Beatles, right before they went to Hamburg, didn't really have a drummer. And it was a requirement to play in some of the venues they were going to play in that they have a drummer. So they got Pete Best to join the band and play drums. And he could keep... Uh, rhythm good enough to go on this trip with them and join the band so he wasn't a terribly great musician but you know he did good enough so off and on when the Beatles would play live they'd play with Pete and he was starting to slack off or not be as invested in the band so Ringo would you know occasionally fill in for him and when the Beatles went to um, meet up with George Martin. George Martin said to them basically that he liked their sound or, you know, that he thought they were you know, good enough, right? Because he wasn't too terribly impressed with them, as you will remember from last video. But he liked them. He just didn't think their drummer was very good. And so they kind of gave Pete Best the boot, or more accurately, they had uh, Brian Epstein. They had him give Pete Best the boot. And then they asked if Ringo could join. So Ringo joined the band. But things weren't so straightforward. For a couple songs on the Please Please Me album, Ringo still isn't drumming. There is a session musician called Andy White. George Martin had hired Andy White to do some drumming. So there are two songs that Andy White drums on that Ringo doesn't. And that would be Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You. On Love Me Do, Ringo's only part is the tambourine. And on P.S. I Love You, he only shakes maracas. And this greatly made Ringo very sad. George has apologized multiple times to him. So there's a, there, that's not the only occasion, right, where Ringo isn't the drummer for the Beatles. Another example is in 1964 when the Beatles went on their world tour. Ringo was very ill at the time and he couldn't play. So rather than canceling the tour, they decided to hire a, another uh, session musician, basically. This is where Jimmy Nickel comes in. He played for the Beatles during their uh, world tour in 1964 for the first eight shows. When the Beatles got to Australia, Ringo rejoined the band and took Jimmy's place. And our last drummer, other than Ringo, is going to be none other than Paul McCartney another Beatle. So there are a couple occasions where uh, not all the Beatles would be present to record a song, right? For example, on She Said, She Said, I'm pretty sure that it is, in fact, George playing the bass instead of Paul. Or on Taxman, all the guitar work is mostly Paul. So there are a couple occasions like that where Paul drums, like on The Ballad of John and Yoko, where the only Beatles actually on that track are John and Paul. But there was a time during the White Album recording sessions where Ringo quit the band for just a little bit. And basically he felt that all the other members were getting along great and he was being left out. So he quit because he didn't feel like, you know, they weren't, he didn't feel like they were being a band. You know, they weren't together. He went and he talked to the other Beatles and they told them that um, no, they felt the same way. They had all asked him to uh, rejoin the band, and when he got back, the studio had been filled with flowers. Because I did feel like it was, you know, we'd done Pepper, and that was fine. 
and we were trying to be a band again, which I love. Right. And then I'm look, you know, I'm there in the studio, and it's like I I don't feel good. I don't feel part of it. So I go and knock on John's door, and I say, Hey, you know, I just don't feel right. I don't feel it. You know, I'm part of this. You three seem so close. And he goes, I thought it was you three. <laughs> Right. So I said, okay, I go and knock on Paul's door, and I tell him the same thing. You know, I don't feel part of this. I feel you three are so close. And he goes, I thought it was you three. Right. So I said, fuck it, I'm off. You know, then I came back, and they were sending faxes to me, come on home. Right. And George at the studio full of flowers. That was great. But because he had quit the band for a little bit, they still needed someone to drum on some tracks. And so there are a couple tracks that Paul had to drum on. And one of those is back in the USSR. Ringo's not the only one to have left the band and rejoined. George, for a little bit in 1969, had left and then came back. But we're not talking about, you know, that right now. We're mostly talking about drummers, right? So anyways, I think that's it for the other drummers in the Beatles. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave a like and subscribe. A comment on your opinions or wh what you thought of this would be appreciated. And I'll see you next time. Please suggest some videos that you'd like to see.